morning, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, your favorite Texas trucker. And uh, I'm going to do another video today. I'm going to talk about one of the controversial subjects in the uh, trucking industry right now. But before I do, uh, before I do, I want to uh, give a shout out to one of my followers on here. A friend of mine named William Turbin. Turbin, I guess that's how I'm. You'll have to correct me on the, pronoun, the correct pronunciation. It's Turbin, uh, aka Franco. And he's been following my videos and commenting on, on nearly all of them. And, uh, and he's fixing to start school. I think he's coming to the Texas Burleson School. He's from Georgia. And uh, so good luck, brother. And, uh, and stick with it. It's not always easy. Uh, that 15,000 miles that you got to do uh, over the road training is the hardest part. And if you can just stick it out and get through that. Learn everything that you got to learn. Uh, you'll be all right. A little bit of advice to you is that pre-trip. Man, I can't stress this enough for you, man. You need to get that pre-trip down. You need to know that pre-trip by heart. And you. Georgia is a tough state to pass that pre-trip. They will fail you if you do not get it right. So uh, your trainer is going to have to take some time off to get you down into Georgia so that you can do your test. And if you fail it, that's lost time. And both of y'all are losing money. So uh, and really, really hit that pre-trip hard. Watch every video on YouTube that you can watch about the pre-trip, especially taking your... your uh, CDL test in Georgia. Uh, Google that on YouTube. There's a couple of really, really good pre-trip videos. Watch them over and over and over and over again. You know, get out there and do it. Walk through the video. Walk through your pre-trip the same way the instructors are telling you to walk through it on those videos, man. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, dude, Georgia is one of the tougher states to pass the pre-trip, man. So you need to stick with it. But, uh, but I appreciate you uh, commenting on the videos. Uh, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. Uchan, Ochan, Turban, uh, William. Hey, you're going to have to correct me on that when you start making videos. Man. Let me know exactly how it's pronounced. Uh, but, uh, man, I do appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, comment as much as you do and, and uh, you know, let me know, uh, you know how you feel about them. And I look forward to seeing your videos. You said you're going to start doing some videos too once you get in the truck. And I look forward to seeing them. I'll definitely be following you. Uh, another shout out to Mr. Sinister. Uh, Sinister, he don't know me, but uh, I know him. Or at least, I mean, I've watched a lot of his videos. Uh, real motivational guy, man. Great attitude. Great attitude, great driver. Uh, he just made the switch to night transport. And, uh, and I hope everything goes great for you, brother. Uh, I'll tag you in this video and, uh, and let you know, man, that uh, you got folks out there watching you. And, uh, you know, you're, you're a great motivator, man. And, and for me, I do appreciate that. So, uh, down to what I'm going to talk about. And that is, uh, it's a subject that, that uh, is almost universally hated by truckers. And that is the uh, dash cam issue. It's not the outward facing dash cam. I mean, almost all of them say they don't have a problem with the outward facing dash cam. You know, I mean, it can, everybody recognizes that it can save your butt, you know, in an accident. Um, up until recently, if you uh, if you hit a vehicle in a commercial vehicle, then it's your word against the other drivers, and honestly, you're held to a higher standard, and you're almost universally at fault. It doesn't matter, you know, what happened, what actually happened, you're going to get the blame for it. Most drivers recognize this. So the introduction of the dash cam is changing that. Because the dash cam is video, it shows what actually happened. You know, and if the driver cuts you off and slams on his brakes, you know, uh, the video is going to show that, you know. And so it's not necessarily always your fault anymore. Driver facing dash cam can save your butt and has saved many drivers. Right? And that's
that's not really the issue. It's that cab facing dash cam. That's the issue. Here, let me let me take this off of here real quick. Let's see. That's the camera that's the issue right there. It's filming me while I'm filming it. Alright? That's the camera that is the issue. That's the one that everybody has the problem with. That's the camera that it is recording the driver. And um, a lot of drivers see it as an invasion of their privacy. Um, a lot of drivers are upset about it. Um, they don't like the idea that the company has eyes on them 24 hours a day. A lot of drivers, you know, they, they're, they come to this job because of the freedom that it gives them, because of the fact that they're uh, largely unsupervised and they don't have to deal with somebody up their ass all the time telling them what to do, how to do it, micromanaging every aspect of their job. And a lot of drivers see this as a means to micromanage. They don't see any benefit in the driver facing camera. Uh, and I've been on the, I've been in this argument for you know a long time now. And I'm gonna make it clear, I'll try to make it clear from the start that I am not a fan of the driver facing camera. Let me readjust this camera now. Um, I am not a fan of the driver facing camera. I don't like it either. But it's a necessary evil, right? And um, a lot of drivers say that there's no instance in which the driver facing camera can help you because um, all it's going to do is give uh, give weapons to the uh, to the prosecutor or to the whoever uh, the uh, the opposing attorney, the accident lawyer, or whoever it is that you have to face to show that there was something that distracted you. I've, I've heard drivers say, well. You know, if I look down at my gauges to check my gauges, um, and, and in that second that I look down, I hit a car, they're going to say that I was distracted. You know, they may try to argue that. Uh, they're going to say, well, you know, if I was talking on the phone, even using a hands-free device, they're going to say that I was uh, I was distracted. The camera's going to show that. Yeah, the camera's going to show that. They're going to probably try to argue that. Uh, but the camera's also going to show uh, you looking at your mirrors, you know, and checking all the way around you, it's also going to show that you're maintaining a proper following distance. And if you're maintaining a proper following distance, you know, uh, there shouldn't be an accident in that split second that you look down to check your gauges and make sure that everything is, is working right. Um, if you're maintaining a proper following distance and you're paying attention to the road signs, it shouldn't matter that you're on the phone talking to somebody using a hands-free device because it's legal to talk on a hands-free device as long as, as uh, you know, you're not sitting there holding the phone to your head, you know, and uh, if you're maintaining proper following distance, proper speed, you're paying attention to the road signs so you don't tear the top end of your trailer off going underneath the bridge, then there shouldn't be a problem with anything the camera shows you. All right. So there's that. Another, another argument is that is that they believe that the company can remotely access the camera at any given time and, and watch anything that you're doing at any given time. And that's simply not true. Uh, first, it's not true because um, of the bandwidth that would be needed to be able to do that. Second, it's not true because of the man hours that would be needed to be able to do that. Uh, really, I mean, one person if, if it could be remotely accessed, one person could remotely access it pretty much at any given time, right? But he couldn't remotely access 700 different cameras or 300 different cameras. It just takes entirely too much time. Third reason is because we don't always have a, a connection, so we can't transfer data all the time, right? In order to be able to remotely access the camera at any given time, you have to have a Wi-Fi access to the camera at any given time. And we don't have Wi-Fi access to the camera at any other time. There is a uh, icon that shows up on this camera here, the, uh, the, the dash cam that shows when you're connected to a data transport, uh, I don't know, terminal, whatever you want to call it, and when it can transfer files. And then there's a second, a third icon that shows up on here that shows you when it is transferring files. Okay. So until it trans, until that shows up, they're not watching you. 
if they were able to remotely access the camera, that when it was transferring the files that are in the camera to wherever it's being accessed, it would show the icon on there and you'd be able to see it happening. Right? It just doesn't happen. Right? What happens is, is that when a critical event occurs, it stores a, I think it's a 30 second clip, 15 seconds before, 15 seconds after a critical event. It stores that, that event in its file. When it reaches a point at which it can transfer that data, then you'll have this blue icon that will show up that'll, that will uh, show that it has a transport connection and it'll start transferring that data to you to clear the critical event out of the camera. Things that cause a critical event. There's quite a few things uh, that can cause it, but this thing is set up so that there's a sensor inside of the camera that, that can move forward or backwards or to either side. And when it moves a certain distance, um, it sets off a critical event. Essentially, that's how this works. So things that can set off a critical event are hard braking. As you brake hard, um, the sensor in it moves enough to show that there were there was an event that occurred that upset the sensor. Okay, then it, then it, it automatically records 15 seconds before that, 15 seconds after that. Um, the camera is constantly recording. It's also constantly erasing. But it doesn't erase the data 15 seconds before and 15 seconds after a critical event. Everything else is constantly being erased. It doesn't have the memory capacity to store much of anything. Okay. So another thing that can set off a critical event is a hard swerve. Swerving hard to one lane and swerving back over to avoid an accident can create a critical event. Taking a turn too fast, you take a 45 mile an hour turn, 55 miles an hour, and you're going to set off a critical event. Um, you know, uh, things like that being hit can set off a critical event. Um, you can manually set off the critical event. I've never done it, but you can reach up and you can hit the bottom of this thing and it'll set off a critical event. Um, so that you can record something that you needed to record if you wanted to record. Right? If you sit down and you figure um, the amount of time that it would take to track three or four hundred of these cameras and watch every everything that occurs on these cameras every day, it wouldn't take you too long to figure out that the, the just the man hours required to do that are astronomical. Right? And so um, it just doesn't happen. You know, uh, this thing sets off a critical event when you get more than 10 miles per hour over over your government speed or over whatever speed. I think it's 72 miles an hour it sets off a critical event. Right? And then. Uh, <coughs> Some of the things that they look for when a critical event occurs is uh, rolling through stop signs, okay, because it shows 15 seconds before, so 15 seconds after. They want to see if you came to a complete stop at a stop sign or a complete stop at a light. All right? They want to see that you're wearing your seatbelt. Okay, they're going to look for whether or not you uh, you were talking on a hands-free device. Uh, it's up in the air about whether or not an actual person does that, uh, you know, looks at each video that comes in or whether or not it's a computer uh, algorithm that takes care of it, okay? I'm inclined to think it's a computer algorithm that takes care of it and looks for specific things and then tags those things and sends it, sends it on. All right, now, my experience, my experience with this camera, and I've had, I've had a camera in my truck ever since I've had this truck. My experience with this is that uh, when you're bobtailing, it goes off the most. Right? When you're empty, it goes off, you know, next. When you're running a full load, very rarely ever goes off. Okay. So it's most sensitive when you're bobtailing. Next is when you're empty, and, and finally, when you're on, under a full load. The heavier the load, the less sensitive it is because um, because the less the cab reacts to uh, sudden changes. Okay. Um, when I'm bobtailing, you know, there's times when I'm bobtailing where I'll set that thing off every five minutes. Um, all right. I mean, I, I literally have set off 20, 30 critical events. You know, bobtailing. Um, bobtailing this thing and, you know, 
there's just nothing, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. The condition of the road, the fact that you have nothing holding down your, your, your back end, uh, sometimes creates a pretty rough ride. And uh, that rough ride can set off this critical event quite a bit. I've even set off the critical event making a turn while bobtailing in fifth gear. Right? Not going fast at all. I mean, literally only going 10 miles an hour. But set off a critical event. Right? Uh, so, you know, those things happen. Um, I've set off critical events for hard stops. I've set off critical events for uh, hitting a, a curve a little bit too quick. Uh, I've set off critical events for you know, excessive speed. I got up like 75 miles an hour one time, coming down the hill and wasn't paying attention. Because I've done that more than one time. Uh, but unless you're actually really being unsafe, uh, you're not going to get messed with about it. I, I have never yet gotten uh, a message from safety or from uh, my dispatch concerning my driving habits because uh, I, I really make an effort not to drive unsafe. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I pretty much stop smoothly. You know, there's a few times I've broke a little bit harder than I should, but, you know, I pretty much stop smoothly most of the time. Um, I don't take turns too fast most of the time. Uh, every now and again I've hit one because it didn't have a sign and I thought it was uh, a little bit, you know, wider than it actually was. And I didn't realize until about halfway into it that, uh, that I needed to slow this thing down, you know. And so, I mean, it's happened a few times, but it doesn't happen very often. And I rarely set off a critical anymore. When I first got this truck, I was setting them off all the time. Now, you know, days have passed before I actually set one off. And I've never, you know, have been harassed about it ever. So they're not that big of a deal. You know, I mean, a lot of people are still upset about it. They just don't like the idea of this driver facing camp. I don't like it either. But, you know, it's not that big of a deal. They're set up because we have window curtains in our, in our trucks. And these are set up so that the window curtains block both cameras. All right. So people say, "Well, I don't like the fact that this camera's on while I'm in the while I'm in the uh, truck trying to sleep." The camera's only on for 30 minutes after you shut it off. And then all you have to do is is shut the the uh, window curtain. You know, you ain't even got to shut both of them. Just shut the right hand window curtain. Pull it, pull it all the way around. That camera can't see a damn thing. Okay. So uh, they do record audio and they do record video, uh, but they don't store their audio or the video and they only send it out during a critical event and they can't be remotely accessed, you know, so don't even, don't even sweat it. It is not a big deal, right? So, uh, you know, that's just kind of, I wanted to touch on that a little bit, you know, I, mean, I know a lot of drivers aren't going to agree. You know, we've lost, Mellis has lost several drivers because of the driver facing camp. It's a negative point uh, for the company and the company's defense. You know, they're doing what they can do to alleviate or to try to uh, correct bad driving habits because there have been some serious accidents uh, solely related to some pretty serious driver error. You know, and, uh, and, and Billis is serious about their safety. And so they're doing what they feel is correct to try to correct that. I feel like it's more of a control issue, you know, my personal, my personal opinion on it is. Uh, you know, they want to control and micromanage you know, a lot of things in the company. Uh, most of the time, it's no big deal. You know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, this time is another one of those times. This is not a deal breaker to make me want to leave the company. They want a camera in my truck. They can have a camera in my truck. I don't care. You know, I mean, I don't like it. I've made it clear that I don't like it, but it's not going to be an issue that I, I lay my job on. You know, I'm not going to quit because they put a camera in my truck. You know, I'm not going to refuse to work for this company because you know they want to monitor you know how I operate their vehicle. You know, so it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, you know, I don't do anything that I shouldn't be doing anyway most of the time. And, uh, you know, we just leave it at that. So that's the camera issue, all right? Dash cams. I think 
what you want to think about them, but that's how they work, and that's you know that's that's the issue. So be aware of it. You know, if you get more Camellus, more than likely you'll get one. Y'all take care, and uh, you know y'all that are trucking out there, you keep trucking, keep being safe. Uh, Mr. Sinister, you keep making those videos, and keep encouraging folks. Do a good job of it. And, uh, and William, uh, John, Cherubin. I'm going to get it right, man. I'm going to get it right. John Cherubin. Uh, if that's how it's pronounced. And, uh, and I want to think that that, that Bouchon or Bouchon is French. Uh, but I, what do I know? Anyway, uh, man, you, you do good in school, man. Take care and uh, peace out.